Last night, I sat around two tables squished together full of 20-somethings who were hungry for good food, community, and to grow together in God's word. And today, we're going to be reading about what happens when we are hungry for the bread of life. So hear now these words from the book of John, chapter 6. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the father who sent me, and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God, and he has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of this world is my flesh. One day, a father went to his son's preschool class on the day that all the dads were invited to visit. When the father got there, he was shocked to see that, the only, to see that only a handful of dads had shown up to be with their children. The children and their fathers were instructed by the teacher to sit in a circle on the floor. The teacher asked the children to say something about their father that made them, that made their father special. One little boy said, my father has a really important job and he couldn't be here because he is really busy. Another little girl spoke up and said, my father makes a lot of money and we live in a big house. So he couldn't be here because he's making a lot of money. Finally, it was time for this father's son to share something about his dad. And he looked up at his dad, and he smiled, and he said proudly, My dad is here. The message that we find in John's gospel is Jesus saying to the world, My dad is here. As, John, or as Jesus told Thomas, No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know the Father. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Friends, for the past four weeks, we have been in the Gospel of John exploring the life and ministry of Jesus. And we started out this series by saying, whatever darkness exists in your world, the darkness is not too dark for God. And why? Well, because Jesus is the light that has entered our world. Or as John put it, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. And then we read about how a man born blind experienced Jesus turning his darkness into light by healing him of his blindness. However, we also discovered that the religious folks weren't very happy about it because Jesus did it by disrupting their own understanding of God. And we learn that you can be in the presence of the light of the world and still be in the dark. Two weeks ago, we discovered that when it looks like the darkness is about to overwhelm us, we can look to Jesus as the way and the truth in the life. And then last week, Reverend Carolyn Clifton invited us to listen to Jesus praying. And what does Jesus pray for? He doesn't pray that his followers will not be led into temptation or that we will always have smooth sailing in our life or that we will be successful in spreading the gospel, things that we think he would ask us or pray for us about. Instead, he prays that we will be united. Whenever there's a disagreement among us, anytime we seriously consider all the reasons why it's hard for us to be united, to love, and to work as one, let's remember what we overheard when we listened in on Jesus' prayer and take it to heart. I pray that they may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, I pray that they also will be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. And now today we pick up in John's gospel immediately after an extraordinary miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. The crowd that had been fed was still amazed by the event and they went looking for Jesus. And now Jesus knew that they were still looking for miracles 
And they really didn't care about the source of the miracle. Jesus reminds the crowd that his heavenly Father gave the bread. And Jesus says, the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The crowd replies that they would like some of this wonder-working bread themselves. And Jesus said, wait, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Friends, John's gospel doesn't give us the Lord's Supper as we know it. There's a final meal with his disciples, but it isn't a Passover meal. And, and Jesus does not speak the words in John's gospel that we hear in other gospel stories. Instead, John gives us these words about Christ's flesh and blood, and he does it in the context of chapter 6, long before the crucifixion and resurrection. Chapter 6 begins and it ends with life-giving bread. The other gospels may have us reflecting at the Lord's Supper on Jesus' death, but John wants us to reflect on what it means to take his life for ourselves. The symbolic language of Jesus as the bread of life evokes intimacy. We eat a piece of bread and it goes to our stomachs. We take Jesus in and Jesus wants to go to our hearts and our minds and our souls. Writing about this text, United Methodist Bishop Will Willimon says, Today's rather scandalously carnal, incarnational gospel reminds us that Jesus intends to have all of us, body and soul, that his truth wants to burrow deep within us to consume us as we consume him, to flow through our veins, to be digested, to nourish every nook and cranny of our being. I recently assisted with communion on one occasion, and a gentleman passed on the communion as we were offering it to each other or to one another, and I respectfully moved on to the next person. And after the service, he motioned for me to come over, and he wanted to explain that, that he didn't just feel worthy to receive communion. And I told the man that the Lord's table is not a reward for good behavior. It is a place for sinners to find forgiveness and grace that we come to the Lord's table not because we are doing well, but because we are in desperate need of grace and mercy. Friends, I believe Jesus wants us to bring our loneliness, our grief, worries about our children, troubled marriages, cancer diagnosis, brokenness, and bring it all to the table. And it is there that he offers us his life as the bread of life for our weary souls. The poet Carl Sandburg wrote, there are hungers for a nameless bread. And we hunger for meaning, and we hunger for connection, and we hunger for direction. We hunger for acceptance, and we hunger for forgiveness and for love. And Jesus says, I'm the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. When we gather around the Lord's table, we bring together all the fragments of our lives. And we do this in the hope that, it, that we will become a community around this table. We move from being separate to being one. Each year on the first Sunday in October, we celebrate World Communion Sunday. It's a day to remind us that our table actually circles the globe. The table includes all of us at 2780 Thompson Bridge Road, and those in Utila, Honduras, and those in Kiev, Ukraine. And on this World Communion Sunday, we gather around our own table remembering Jesus' call to love our neighbors and to serve. And we move from being separate to being one. And today we recognize a truth that we often take for granted. And that truth is that we're all hungry. And Jesus meets us in our hunger to be the bread of life for us. Author Nora Gallagher tells a story of her friend Kay. Kay moved from Colorado to Los Angeles, and Kay's friend Lucy invited Kay to church. Now, Kay went along rather reluctantly, taking up residence on the very back pew. Each week when it came time for communion, all the worshipers would make their way to the table. Kay, on the other hand, refused to move. She'd cross her arms tightly, and she'd stay put. One day after worship, the minister asked Kay why she didn't take communion. She says, well, I really don't know. And the minister responded, Kay, I want you to know we're family, and you're family, and this is a family table. And she liked the analogy, but still refused to participate. One day, Lucy asked her friend, what are you afraid of? What was she afraid of? Kay began to ask herself. 
And the next Sunday, Kay stepped out in faith, and she watched as the minister came closer and closer with the bread. And Kay recalled the moment, saying, it was at this point that I realized I would have to, well, I'd have to open my hands. When the moment came, she said it was as though she heard an audible voice from God saying, come on, girlfriend, open your hands. Reflecting on this encounter, author and friend K of K, Nora Gallagher, says, it is dangerous opening your hands. You don't know what will end up in them. This may have been the smartest thing Jesus ever did. He must have thought, how can I make them step into the unknown? How can I get them to let me surprise them? How can, I, how can they trust me? I know, Jesus says, I'll, I'll figure out a way for them to put their hands out in front of them, empty. I know what I'll do. I'll put a table at the center of their faith, and I'll call myself the bread of life. And they want to take it. They're going to have to let go of whatever it is they're clinging so tightly to and approach me with open hands. Friends, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. So come on down to the table and eat and have your hungry soul satisfied. So I want to close today with a table blessing that Jenny's going to read for us, written by writer Jan Richardson. And may God richly bless you. To your table you bid us come. You have set the places, you have poured the wine, and there is always room, you say, for one more. And so we come. From the streets and from the alleys, we come from the deserts and from the hills, we come. From the ravages of poverty and from the places of privilege, we come. Running, limping, carried, we come. We are bloodied with our wars, we are wearied with our wounds. We carry our dead with us and we reckon with their ghosts. We hold the seeds of healing. We dream of a new creation. We know the things that make for peace and we struggle to give them wings. And yet to your table we come, hungering for your bread, we come. Thirsting for your wine, we come. Singing your song in every language, speaking your name in every tongue, in conflict and in communion, in discord and in desire, we come. O oh God of wisdom, we come. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I could do to let you down It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Whoa. Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythms of the wind to call me how you would cross an ocean so I wouldn't drown you've never been closer than you are right now hey, raise, hey, raise. we call him
God always has been and always will be our good provider. From bread in the wilderness to the escaping Israelites to bread on the night Jesus was broken and betrayed, God gives us what we need to know him, love him, live with him, and to share him. Today we celebrate and unite with people all around the globe in remembrance of World Communion Sunday. Thank you for giving this time to watch today, and thank you for giving this to this online ministry. If you would like to support Together What If, you can go to gfumc.com give. And as always, you can help us build online bridges to Christ by liking and sharing this content. This week, may we have eyes to see the provision of God to us, and may we walk so in tune with His grace that God can flow through us as a means of provision to others. See you next Sunday.